the idea is just plain clothes and hard tactics, and I don't think they'll know what hit them. Because okay. they're not prepared for what we're planning. Okay, we're gonna take the knife. Thanks. Yeah, we gotta get two AKs coming. Matt McDonald here with Fox 13 News. Hey, We've been tracking Antifa for a long time. He was just down there at President's Circle, and they were handing out sharp objects to stab people with, so they had someone coming with an AK. Why did it take two late night hosts, comedians, to find this out? I, you know what, I wish you guys luck. Marley was dead to begin with. Okay, there you go. Verifiable proof that Antifa is premeditatedly and proactively violent. And you'll see more in this video than you've probably ever seen before. The kinds of attacks they plot, how they coordinate, what tools they use. Even more importantly, you'll see a complicit media who, when offered this very footage, turned the other way. How do we know all this? Because we've been infiltrating this organization for a long time. Hard. But first, you'll need a primer. Protests, violence, riots, calling everyone a Nazi. This is the MO of Antifa. We've all seen it, but the media, politicians, and academia all defend, deflect, or completely deny. They are strictly principled anti-fascists. What we saw were some brave people risking their lives. That group protests fascism. Maybe their tactics weren't exactly right. It's messy. Antifa are people who go and they try to push back on these guys, but it is not the case that they are going around building an armed movement. Fascism cannot be defeated through speech. You need to take it with the utmost seriousness before it's too late. Black Lives Matter, the Antifa movement is interested in preserving the fabric of America. Antifa is one of those things that somebody came up with as a catchphrase so that you could say, you know, oh, there is violence on the other side. Why is that? Why defend the indefensible? Are they really just an inconsequential group of rabble-rousers? How deep does Antifa's organization go? What's their end game? Well, for several months, we tracked and infiltrated Antifa, culminating in their violent protest of the notorious Jewish Nazi speaker, Ben Shapiro, at the University of Utah. But before we get to the part where we send not gay Jared in undercover, vulnerable, afraid, and shaking like a Chinese crested without one of those little gay sweaters, a little backstory. <laughs> I want to kick my own ass. In order to get in with the Antifa crowd, we had to infiltrate their private groups. After news broke that they were officially classified as a domestic terrorist organization, they pulled everything in much closer to the chest. They started vetting people, becoming paranoid about spies. They demanded we meet with them in person, installing a cryptic messaging app onto our phone, which they used to organize. So I just met with the guy, and uh, he installed a super secret encrypted messenger app on my phone, and uh, they immediately took roll call. Um, using all pseudonyms such as Firebird, Ski Mask, Xevious, Xavius, yeah, everyone except for Will. Yes, Will, whom we immediately identified on Facebook. Will also boasted of his sawed-off shotguns and armory in his trunk. At least that's what he said. I have a toolbox of four Did you bring your gun? Uh, I have, uh, like, on the border between just a regular rifle and an assault weapon and so remember, just as the local authorities will remember, this is Will. What happened to you, Will? Somewhere on the way, you lost yourself. Believe me, it gets worse. The context makes all of this so much worse. Oh, also, yes, the violent Antifa organizer is seemingly a tranny and or genderqueer. Patience. Now, to be fair, anyone can likely show up and protest, but they told us that all of this was required if we wanted to take part in their self-professed tactics. Now, just what do they mean by tactics? Well, we found out the next day. Again, patience. First, to understand what their tactics are, understand that Antifa is now in a PR battle. So what they claim and what they do are two very different things. Just plain clothes and hard tactics, and I don't think they'll know what hit them. Okay. Because they're not prepared for what we're planning. Despite wanting to put distance between themselves and Antifa, and despite what resident gay Asian SJW in chief George Takei tweets out, Antifa has never operated alone. They've been actively supported by professors and other leftist and student organizations. For example, current University of Utah faculty like Cindy Geraldine Solomon Kleppa and Alinda McKenna encouraged and emboldened students to disrupt the Ben Shapiro event and to create chaos. People like Ben Shapiro are the most dangerous people on this earth. And we're going to fight him tomorrow, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. Solidarity. 
and student organizations like the Students for a Democratic Society, because that's the thing, not only work alongside Antifa when convenient, but work with them to scope out police and even to provide pseudo-security by committing acts of violence. Antifa is, just to be clear, it's not an organization. Um, That's what we want to know. It's short for uh, anti-fascist, and I'm absolutely mm -hmm. anti-fascist. And I would echo what Ian just said. Uh, Antifa, as a label, does not mean uh, one static organization, but it's definitely uh, an ideology, a movement, a, a stance, if you may, of anti-fascism, bar none. Um, we signs explicitly ask these people who show up in Black Bloc um, to show up, um, these Antifa people to show up, because, you know, in the past we've been threatened by three percenters, we've been threatened by neo-Nazis, we've been threatened by these people before, and their presence gives people an immense more amount of safety. Now, according to Antifa's own words, what makes them different? The difference between them and many of the other activist groups is the willingness to uh, respond with violence. See, the ultimate problem with Antifa and the organizations and professors who support them is that because they paint their opposition as Nazis, they've developed their very own unique code as to what warrants a violent response. They are ready and looking for it. Okay, we're gonna take the knife. Nice. How much Thanks. of a... Uh, I have a, like, on the border between just a regular rifle and an assault weapon and a uh, sawed-off style shotgun. The willingness to respond with violence, um, the way that I would address what you were just asking about is I, I would, I don't want to disavow an ally within the movement. The no pictures, no pictures, that part, uh, I would say it's understandable given what I was just talking about with anonymity. Mm -hmm. gonna now, context, don't forget. What you gotta do can include violence against anyone you call a Nazi. They call Ben Shapiro a Nazi. They're allowed to commit violence against anyone filming them. And just how violent can they get? If you go down to like that military surplus store, the Navy surplus store, yeah. or whatever, you can get like a K-Bar for like 30, 40 bucks. And it's just a combat knife. It's a fixed blade, five inches or so, but it's just, you strap it on your leg and you can go. I mean, this one's like tiny, so you have to really stab them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like supplies. last ditch is gonna be Blue super. lure them down here. Whoa, 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 hold. Luring people to their cars with sawed off shotguns and handing out knives and shivs. This went far beyond a goof and we needed to get Nake Jared out of there. Good thing the man's got a quick mind. Is there a place to sh around here? I don't know this campus. To the right. All right, I'll be right back. You guys could be in a few minutes. Yes, at the risk of being called a snitch, Nake Jared immediately turned the footage over to the authorities who were already aware of our presence there, by the way. Turns out they'd been tracking this pansexual slash transgender queer with an axe to grind for a while, and they were grateful for our footage. The media, on the other hand, who you think would jump on a story like this, well, their response is what's most disturbing of all. Uh, he was just down there at President's Circle and they were handing out sharp objects to stab people with, said they had someone coming with an AK. Why did it take two late night hosts, comedians, to find this out? I, you know what, I wish you guys luck. Yes, you just saw correctly. Even being shown the footage in the presence of police officers to confirm authenticity, they walked away. Also, I should note, this is Dan Harris from Nightline, National ABC News. He knew about the footage and the whole story too. I offered it to him and asked for his card. He did not give it to me. We were delivering a story to local and national news on a silver platter which included infiltration, violence, and exposing the roots of a national domestic terrorist organization. And no one even wanted to give it a glimpse? Not one person? It didn't even get mentioned. Protesters flooding the campus, trying to shut down conservative speaker Ben Shapiro's appearance. These are protesters that are against Ben Shapiro conservative. Only these people didn't call Ben Shapiro controversial. They called him a Nazi. And they aren't there to protest. They are there to punch Nazis as they chalk and paint on the walls or commit violence against people filming them, depending on the day. Case in point, our footage assisted with leading to the arrests of these violent protesters. Good example, code name Honeybee? Her real name is Jenna Now, let me be clear here, we do not want to dox anyone, and we ask that none of you dox anyone, but we do want you to alert your local authorities if you recognize any of these people. These folks aren't playing a game anymore. This is serious violence. Take this black girl who committed assault. Now, we couldn't find any official arrest record, uh, but we did post this on Facebook, and then this happened. So we immediately ID'd her as well. Grace They're so easy to trick. Officers, we appreciate your service. Now, of course, the next day, when the inevitable violence that we warned about broke out, so-called journalists were all over it. Because, you know, 
they're lazy. Here's the thing, Antifa and its supporters are openly practicing violence. Worse, they plan it. They plan to escalate it, as you can see. Now, if they call Ben Shapiro or me a Nazi, what does that make you? If they justify violence against someone with, I don't know, an iPhone camera, what can they do to you? But worst of all, why did it take a late night podcast host and his producer to do this kind of journalism? Cryptic messaging apps, private groups, handing out illegal weapons and planning tactics. You mean to tell me that no one at ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN with billions of dollars and resources could have done this? It took Steven Crowder and not gay Jared to pull it off with some plane tickets and a couple burner phones? Sure, listen, Antifa is violent, they suck. We get it, very violent. But but the fact that the media has never reported on any of this begs the question, are they complicit? Is the media complicit with all of this? Or do they just suck at their jobs? I know who you are, Antifa. And I know what you want. If you're looking for a safe space, I can tell you that I have no sympathy. What I can tell you is that I have a very particular set of skills. Skills that I've acquired over a very long period of time. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you stop your acts of violence now, that will be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will ID you.